The Yokoyokam T and S. Which one should you buy and why are there two models? The Okio Cam T and S might just be the best value visualizer. What's the difference between the two of them? Well, the S is for students and the T is for teachers. And they look pretty similar, but actually there are some differences underneath. Essentially, the Okio Cam S has a slightly smaller camera and it's a slightly lower quality camera. It also covers a slightly lower base because it doesn't have the extender arm the Okio Cam T comes with. The Okio Cam T has a slightly better quality camera in it and it also has an extender arm which means that you can cover up to an A3 area of paper. Why the difference and why both of them? Well because the OcuoCam system is really more all about the student. It's all about the student experience. The OcuoCam T is for you as a teacher. It's one of the most easy to set up visualizers. It's one of the most inexpensive visualizers and it has all the features that you need. The real aim of the OcuoCam system is the student experience. That's the flip button there, and so we can see the selfie mode on the camera. So let's see how good that quality actually is. And that grey button does the autofocus, it does the auto white balance, and that's it recording now. I'm going to feed this back to Okio Cam because I think they can do better on that picture quality. This is the shot after I've white balanced it in my video editor. So you can get it to look really quite good if you need to. The reason is, is that the exposure and white balance is prioritised for what looks good with white paper and black ink. Maybe when you press that button to switch to webcam mode, it could prioritise skin tones in the auto exposure and white balance. I think possibly one area they might want to improve this is the cable management. It's probably a better way for it to go through this stem rather than the way it does now. So how does that look? So how does that look? Another thing to be aware of is that the Okio Cam T or S don't actually come with a built-in microphone. So I'd really recommend that you get a USB microphone to go with this visualizer. I've got my suggestions linked up in this video here. Back to visualizer mode with one button and re-auto white balance with the grey button and you're back set up again. Also you can use this in a variety of ways. You can have this anchored underneath your laptop if you like and the visualizer coming off this side. In fact it even does a good job of balancing like so. Or indeed you can have the whole working area folded out for it to be a nice plain surface. to work on or to show off your artifacts. Quite cool, huh? So this is great value, but don't expect phenomenal video quality at this price point. I must say that. It's a great value visualizer setup, it's incredibly portable and it's perfect for hybrid learning or remote learning. So let's talk about this. This is the Okio Cam T. This is the teacher model of the Okio Cam system and it's an excellent tool. It's a perfect tool for hybrid learning. Well, what is hybrid learning? Hybrid learning is when you're teaching some of your class in front of you and some of your class are having to watch from home. And this is incredibly useful at the moment for us when we're dealing with this pandemic and some people are at home having to self-isolate and some people are actually in the class in front of you. And the beauty is you can set this up incredibly quickly as a webcam and you can just stream that out live and be modeling to the class in exactly the same way you're modeling at home. And modeling is something that does translate really well over the internet for remote learning. In the future, it might be that by design we actually go for a more hybrid system or even a true blended model of learning. And blended model of learning means that you're actually choosing when to be teaching the students remotely and when to actually have them in the class in front of you. And this, with this, you can make really high quality videos to explain things for people to consume and prepare themselves with knowledge and understanding to apply in the classroom setting. The thing about using that visualizer is you can recreate the classroom setting as closely as possible for people sat at home shouldn't be anything jarring about the way in which you use technology. If technology gets in the way, then it can get in the way of learning, but the Okio Cam certainly doesn't do that. It doesn't get in the way of your teaching and the students learning. I've been using the Okio Cam T for a couple of weeks now and I love the portability and I love how easy it is to set up. It's incredibly light and so light in fact you'll forget it's in your bag. And that's a bit dangerous because you'll forget you have it and maybe you forget to use it. But it's such a great tool that I think you'll be getting this out just about every lesson. The other things I love is the simple one push to focus, white balance and auto expose. That's a really useful thing and it's single 
auto exposure, auto focus and auto white balance so it doesn't change after you press that button. It only changes when you press the button, it's a single push and it locks it off so you can be confident it's going to stay in focus as you're teaching. It's also incredibly easy to set up and to break down once you get the knack. It's quite a clever design solution really in its simplicity and that's quite good. The one thing I would ask them to improve for future models is to think about this cable management. Because although it's fine, it does work, it doesn't get in the way too much, I think there's a better way of dealing with that. Perhaps having the cable run through the stem so that it comes out of the base all the time might be a nice way to do that. Well, who am I to talk about cable management? I mean, look at this room. I think that's one of the problems with sharing classrooms this year. I do also wonder about how wobbly the head is. That's something else that perhaps as you write, you will probably wobble that head. But you're never gonna have anything different than that if you want that lightweight construction. It is gonna be wobbly like that. So that's the Okiocam T. Let's set up the Okiocam S and see the comparison. Gotta just remember, the first thing you do, change the side from storage to use. That should give you a pretty good indication of the difference in size between the two visualizers. The Okiocam S is certainly everything you need in a basic visualizer, but I'd recommend teachers to go and get the one intended for you. Let's plug it in and see the difference. Certainly ready to go in moments, so that's a plus point. So the student model certainly looks fine. It's certainly good enough for everything that your students would want to do. It's probably good enough for what a teacher wants to do. I mean, that covers the width of an A4 sheet of paper perfectly fine. But you don't then have the option if you want to cover, let's say, an A3 sheet. It is a lower quality camera. You can probably see it's a little bit more pixelated and it's a little bit more noisy and there's some color fringe in and some digital artifacts around those dark print areas. This is what I get if I ask my video editor to do the auto exposure and also to auto white balance it. And it's not necessarily better than what the Okio Cam does automatically, so you're okay there. But let's have a look at it side by side with the Okio Cam T and see if you can indeed tell the difference. And this might help you actually make the decision between the two. Looking at that, it would be easy to think that the Okio Cam T was shakier when you write with it. But in fact, it's just because I have the extender arm actually attached at this point. So one key difference about the Okio Cam T compared to the Okio Cam S is it has this extra extension function. So that might be really useful for you if you're an art teacher, for instance, and you wanted to show a large sheet of paper as you worked. But if you do want to annotate and actually write live on the screen and you want it to be less shaky then just use the Okio Cam T without the extender built in. So the camera head should be used this way around to make sure the camera head is right in the middle of that writing surface. The way it's designed gives it a lot of versatility but you do need to get used to using it to make sure you're using it in the best way possible. So the point is that this system is about the student experience and the S model is cheap enough such that you can actually give your students these powerful tools for their own learning. More coming on this in the next few videos when I'm gonna talk about using the OkioCam software and I'm gonna talk about getting the best out of the OkioCam system. And that's whether you're a tutor, teaching online or whether you're a teacher having to deal with hybrid learning or whether this is just ordinary teaching and learning and you want to give your kids some creativity to learn things in a more memorable way.